myself for the future because when I get myself set up, they will be into it. What? <laughs> It's prayer time for this Sunday service, and it begins now. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Pastor Porter, Lady Porter, and my Impact family and friends. I am Reverend Catherine Sams, and it is our custom here at the Impact Church to start each service with intercessory prayer, where we pray for those that are in need as well as ourselves. So this morning, as we pray, I just ask each one of you to remember those that are not as fortunate as we are. Remember those that do not know God in the partnering of their sins. Remember those that are wayward and are lost. Remember those that have been in some type of devastation this week and even going through it now. And I say, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Our God and Father of the universe, the God that created the heavens and the earth, the God that took time to make mankind in his own image 
and to blow his breath, his ruach into man and we became a living soul. Oh God, we come this morning giving your name praise and honor. We worship you, Lord, for we know that had it not been for you on our side, we don't know where we would be. So this morning, God, we give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. We lift your name and we say hallelujah to the highest. Oh God, we thank you this morning for waking us up. For it was only your grace and your mercy that allowed us to get up and to dress ourselves. It was your grace and your mercy that allowed us to walk into this building to give you honor and praise. Oh God, it was your grace and mercy that kept us through the night. So we thank you for grace. We thank you for mercy. We thank you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God, I thank you this morning. Father, I come this morning standing in the gap for parents. I come standing, God, in the gap for some mother, some father that's wondering where their child is today. I come, Father, standing in the gap for that mother, for that father, for that parent that has cried all night long knowing that we have put them in your hands. Oh God, I come for that mother and that father whose child is locked behind prison walls this morning. God, it's not because we didn't try to bring them up the way you asked us to bring them up. But Father, they got their own minds and did what they wanted to do. But God, we know that you said that the fruit, the fruit, the fruit of our wound was blessed. And because of that, Father, we are now asking your Holy Spirit to search our children's hearts. Go into the crevice. Go into the parts that we can't reach. We're asking you, Father, to go in. And we're asking you to change that which is not like you. Oh God, I come this morning asking you to be with those that have lost loved ones. Those that are going through the death experience. I pray God that you will give them a peace that surpasses all understanding. Oh Father. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. The only name that we know to call on. We're calling you this morning. We're asking God that you would be with the earthquake victims. We're asking God that you would shed light on their darkness. For you have said that we are the light of the world. So Father, I'm just asking now that the light, your light, be shown around those that are going through devastation. And then, Holy Spirit, I just ask you now to illuminate this atmosphere. Allow your spirit to go up and down every aisle, in and out every row. Rest on the hearts of your people. 
hear their cry this morning. Let the songs of Zion go forth with anointing that you have placed on their voices. Let every note be played according to your will. And then, Father, as your servant come forth to bring the word that you have given to him, let it not fall on deaf ears, but let it fall on fertile ground. Let it bless, let it heal, and let it deliver, and let it bring salvation to some lost soul. This humble prayer I pray this morning in no other name that I know than in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And I say, let the redeemed of the Lord say, Amen. Good morning, good morning. First, giving honor to God, to Pastor Porter, to our First Lady, to the members, friends, officers of Impact Church. My name is Tammy Thompson, and I will be bringing the scripture, the morning scripture to you today. Thank you for standing. The scripture will be coming from Psalms 143, verses 8 through 10. Psalms chapter 143, verses 8 through 10. Let me hear of your unfailing love each morning, for I am trusting you. Show me where to walk, for I give myself to you. Rescue me from my enemies, Lord. I run to you to hide me. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your gracious spirit lead me forward on a firm footing. May the Lord add a sweet, sweet blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Amen. Thank you for remaining standing as we now do our vision and our mission. Our vision is to be a diverse Christian-centered community equipping catalysts to work collaboratively to transform their world. Our mission is to be a limit, living demonstration of God's love. God bless you. Announcement. Announcements for the week of April 7th. Join the Porter Kids on April 14th, 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. for Spring Skate for a time of fun, food, and fellowship at Ron and Roll. Entry and skate rental are free to the first 50 youth and young adults 21 and under. Dinner is included. Only $10 after the first 50 people. It's scholarship season. We encourage scholars to apply for as many scholarships as possible. Impact Academy announces its 2024-2025 scholarship application. Submit audiovisual response no longer than five minutes long, starting March 3rd to April 21st, 2024. Scholarship application is open for all current college undergrads, trade school students, and 2024 graduating high school seniors. Please email impactacademyk12 at gmail.com 
or scan QR code on flyer for application and more information. We are officially heading to New Orleans, Louisiana for the official service of consecration to be held at the Live Full Conference Next Is Now, July 9th through the 11th, 2024. The consecration service will be held on July 11th, 2024. Don't miss it. Meet us in New Orleans. If interested in attending in person or virtually, please register at www.fullgospelbaptist.org backslash conferences. We will be staying at the Hilton New Orleans Riverside Hotel, 2 Portrait Street. Call 1-504-561-0500 to reserve your room. Mention room block code FGBCFI for our discounted rate. There is no fee to reserve your room. Charges will not be applied until after your stay. 2023 was the year of focus. 2024 is the year of vision. If you focus on God, let God open up your vision to see what God is saying. An opportunity is coming your way. Today, we kick off Vision 2050. Our goal is to have 250 people give a love offering of $500 for the year. $250 will be due by June 30th, 24, and another $250 will be due by December 31st, 24. That works out to be only $10 a week for 25 weeks. As we head into the year 2025, believing that God has an opportunity coming our way, please consider Vision 2050. You can give through our app by clicking on the drop down box and selecting Vision 2050. If you have any questions, please note we will have informational tables set up after every service in the hallway. Pause and pray. Call in each Tuesday and Thursday at 6.30 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. to hear an encouraging word from Pastor Porter or one of our ministers. Dial 480-660-2224. Passcode 733-4103. Tune in weekly to our YouTube channel at 7 p.m. for WWE. This stands for Wednesday Word Experience. It is our church's expression of Bible study. Continue to follow us on all of our social media platforms, Facebook and Instagram at Impact Church Now, and on YouTube at Impact Church Now TV.
place I need somebody to confuse the enemy out there clap your hands hallelujah let's confuse him come on let's confuse him let's confuse him come on I need somebody to help me I need somebody to help me confuse him this morning hallelujah we've already won I need somebody to help me come on put those hands together I need some victorious people in here I need victorious people in here hallelujah 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 we bind the enemy on every hand we bind the enemy on every hand we bind the enemy on every hand everything he decides he's gonna do everything he thinks he's gonna try to do we bind him up in Jesus name 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 we bind him up the blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus touch every camera the blood of Jesus touch every camera the blood of Jesus touch every mic the blood of Jesus touch every row in this place you are defeated you are defeated you are defeated we will praise you we will sing this morning we will dance this morning we will play this morning pastor will preach this morning the cameras will work the cameras will work the laptop will work the blood of Jesus glory to God glory to God glory to God sometimes you just gotta call those things out the things that the devil is trying to stop you gotta call them out he has no power here today he has no power he has no power he has no power we're gonna praise him and we're gonna adore his name because he's been good to us somebody just lift your hands and just tell him thank you real quick tell him thank you worship him worship him we adore his name because he's been good to us has he been good to anybody in here anybody watching has he been good to you if he has just do me a favor and take a moment and tell him and thank him on how good he's been to you we don't deserve any of it we don't deserve any of it just fill this house with worship and adoration for what he continues to do for us in spite of in spite of hallelujah 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 come on let's sing we adore Worship. We worship you, Lord. For, for your mercy to be praised. Praise. Praise. We adore. We adore yes, Lord. you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you. For your worthy. That's all we're singing this morning. Come on, help us sing. Come on, everybody say, we adore you. We adore you. Let's adore him. We worship you. We worship you. For you're worthy. For you're worthy to be praised. Praise. Praise. We adore you. Come 
on, let's sing it one more time, everybody. Come on, let's adore him. Say, we adore. Somebody lift your hands. Let's give him thanks this morning. Come on, let's give him thanks. Because he's been good to us. Come on, I need somebody to thank him. For the many ways he's made. For the doors he keeps opening for us. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, sing. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks. For his good. Come on, sing, oh, give thanks. Oh, oh, give thanks. For his good. For his good. Come on, sing, oh, give thanks. Oh, oh, give thanks. Yes, Lord, for his good. Come on, thank him. Come on, sing, oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks. Come on, sing, oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks. For it's good. Oh, Has he been good to you? Come on, sing, oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks. Come on, let's give him thanks for oh, it's good. Take it up, say, oh, give thanks. It's 
mercy even when we don't do right his mercy even when we don't want to do right his mercy his mercy no his mercy no, no, no. his mercy uh, oh give thanks no oh give thanks for he is good for he is good for he is good do me a favor testify to your neighbor and tell him over and over he keeps on blessing me oh, come on tell somebody say over and over I'm a witness he keeps on blessing me hallelujah glory thank you Lord come on everybody come on everybody say over over hand over hand over he keeps on he keeps on blessing me favor favor I've got I've got favor he keeps on blessing he keeps on blessing me come on everybody say over over hand over hand over he keeps on blessing he keeps on blessing me Come on, sing favor. Favor. I've got. I've got favor. Hey, he keeps on blessing. He keeps on blessing me. I can't explain. I can't explain it. It's so amazing. It's so amazing. It's not by goodness of my own. It's not by goodness of my own. And from the depths depth of my soul, my soul I am he keeps blessing. Come on, everybody sing. Over. over. Come on, head over. over. Yes, Lord. He, he keeps on blessing. Everybody sing. Favor. favor. I've got. I've got favor. Hey. He keeps on blessing. Come on, everybody sing. Over. Over. Hey, head over. over. Sing, y'all. He keeps on blessing. He keeps on blessing me. Hey, say favor. Favor. I've got. I've got favor. Hey, he keeps on blessing. He keeps on blessing me. I can't explain. I can't explain it. So amazing. It's so amazing. It's not by goodness it's of my own. It's not by goodness of my own. And from the depths of my soul, I'm grateful. He keeps on blessing me. I can't explain. It's so amazing. It's not my goodness. Hey. And from the depths of my soul, hey. He keeps on blessing me. I can't explain. Celebrate the blessing out there. Let's celebrate the blessing. Hey. Tell somebody I got favor. Come on, everybody, keep some blessing. Keep some blessing me. Hey, I got favor. I got favor. Hey, say keep some blessing.
Hallelujah. He'll give it to the faithful. He'll give it to the faithful. And let me take it a step further. He'll give it to those that are too faithful. Glory to God. That makes it fair. That makes favor fair. That makes favor fair. Somebody testify, say it's on my life. I'm here to tell the devil that favor is in this house. It's in this house. It's in Aya. It's in this house. 
Favor. Somebody shout, thank you for the blessing. Yo. Somebody shout again, say thank you for the blessing. Oh, yeah, yeah. As we move off this stage, does anybody want to praise God for the blessing? Can anybody praise Him? Oh, yeah. For the blessing. Can anybody praise Him? Can anybody praise Him? For even the things that you don't even see right now. Can somebody praise him? Open. 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 We're moving. We're moving. But as we move off the stage, I don't even need five people. I just need three people that will praise God before the blessing comes. I need three people to praise God before the blessing comes. It's coming. If it's not already here yet, what you've been asking God for, Miss Donna, it's on the way. 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 Oh yeah, it's on the way. 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 Encourage somebody and tell them what you've been asking God for. It's on the way. It's on the way.
Let us pray. God, we things but you erase to pursue us but you canceled it. We look around and we cannot deny that you keep on blessing us. We know that we have favor. Somebody said that favor is not fair, but we recognize that it is godly. And we thank you that you have kept us and blessed us, and never left us, and given us another Sunday morning to get up and to try it again. Now, God, speak to our hearts, speak to our minds, and speak to our circumstances. Speak to the things that are trying to destroy us. And speak to the parts of us that needs to improve and speak to the parts of us that has gotten better and needs to stay better. Speak to the part of us that is tempted but has not yet given in. Speak to the parts of us that are weak but have not let go. Speak to the part of us that are strong and need further strength. Speak Holy Spirit. That's why we came to church this morning. That's, that's why we logged on. This is not a Sunday morning activity. We came because we know that you have the words of life. Light, they speak to us. They guide us and direct us. And so, Lord, our heads and hearts are open that we might hear what it is that your spirit is saying to the church. Thank you, God, for being our comfort and guide. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for victory in these moments. Thank you for victory after these moments. Thank you for victory over these moments. It's done and it's well. In Jesus' name. And all who received and believed said amen. Come on, if you know you got favor, put your hands together. Praise the Lord from whom all blessings flow. Amen, amen. It is a good thing to be in the house of the Lord. One more time, amen. Amen. It's so good to see all of you here in church this morning. And those of you who are viewing online, we thank God for you as well. We thank God for another opportunity to gather into his house and to worship his name. Yeah, you could have gone anywhere in the world, but you decided to come to church this morning. And for that, you ought to give yourselves a round of applause. Amen. 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 I want to... Uh, also, as we do on every Sunday, not out of routine, but out of sincere appreciation, thank God for all of our volunteers. Come on and join me in thanking God for them. We thank God for them wherever they are. Whatever they've done, we thank God for each and every one of them and for each and every one of you. I want to, just before we go forward, also to acknowledge if we have any first-time visitors among us. If you're visiting with us for the first time, please, ma'am, please, sir, if you don't mind, would you just lift your hand right where you are? I see some hands. I see some. God bless you. Come on, if you're close to them, give them a holy handshake or a hug and a smile and let them know that they are welcome in this place. We thank God for you being here this morning. There's many churches that you could have chosen and you decided to be here and we don't take that for granted. And we pray that something said or done, if not already, will be done that will enrich your soul. And know that at your earliest opportunity, you're welcome to come back and to worship with us again. Amen. Amen. I also want to thank God for Reverend Sams, who's up here with me today. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. It's just the two of us today, but we're two or three touching the green. God will be with us. Amen. Amen. We're also praying for Minister Frank. She, uh, they celebrated her father's life on this past week. And so uh, we are praying with her and her family that they would continue to go through the grief process, not without having understood and feeling the presence of God going through it with them. And so we are praying for them as well. Amen. Amen. Look at y'all. All y'all came to church the Sunday after Easter. Tell your neighbor, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Come on, tell somebody, I'm proud of you. Yeah, that's 
sir. Look, if you thought I wasn't going to say nothing, you don't know me because I'm, I'm going to say something. You tell your neighbor, and I still look good. And I still, amen. Oh, we are so much. It might seem more like a dumb crying. So if you pray, God will do a traditional for. Got to look it up for yourself. The 24, beginning at verse his writing, far as Bethany. Mm -hmm. He left them and returned to Jerusalem with great is the son of blessing and pry way up. And speak over yourself. I'm on my. Imagine if you would with me only to get a book you ever read in your life has been torn out. Imagine putting together in when you get to the end of having spent the last piece. Brand new, beautiful car. You get in, you live in your brand new house. Walking. Look up in the sky, what it's like. And miss what else God has for you. This is why. And I mean this, I spent this week praying for people who only come to church on Easter. I did it because, not because I want to see a full house. I did it because I realized that people who only celebrate resurrection miss and forfeit further in from the church once twice or three times a year there's no reason to wonder why some things are happening why some things you never understand and why there's certain things about God you'll never have access to Y'all ought to be able to say amen better than that. I'm telling you that if you believe that the Bible is true, you should not wait until Sunday morning to wait here, to come here and wait for me to read it to you. Every now and then, at least, you ought to open it for yourself. If you believe that prayer is real, if you can't get me or another minister or a deacon on the phone, listen, it's not a tragedy to your life. The reason why you come to church is not so you'll have somebody to pray for you. The reason why you come is so that you can gain strength to pray for yourself. I wish I had a witness here today. If you believe that worship is necessary, you should not need a praise team or musicians to lead you into worship. You ought to be able to walk around your house, ride in your car, sit in your cubicle or in your office, and every now and then think of the goodness of Jesus. And without being prompted by someone else, your hands ought to go up or your mouth ought to open or sometimes a tear might fall from your eye. And if you can't say nothing else, you ought to be able to say, God, I thank you. For what you've done for me, I'm telling you. I've heard it before where people said, you know, I, I, wanna, I, wanna, I want a pastor who's attentive. I want a church that looks out for me. I've heard people say, I'm leaving that church because it doesn't feel like those people care about me. Let me tell you, the church is not meant to fill in for relationships that you don't have on the outside. The church is meant to empower you to know yourself, praise by yourself, sing by yourself, and if need be, preach to yourself. And if nobody else says amen, you ought to be able to be your preacher and your amen corner so that you can walk through life with you and God alone. Y'all ain't saying nothing, but it's the truth. That's really why you come to church. And if you come to church for any other reason, you are missing the point. And if you miss church, you are missing so much. It's the truth, y'all. And I'll submit to you that you need church more than you need work. 
I knew you wouldn't say amen to that, but I'm going to say it anyway. I say unapologetically because you need God to speak to you so you can keep wanting to go to work. I, I'll submit to you that you need church more than you need money. Because you need a God to show you and to guide you on how to manage and how to do what needs to be done with that money. I'll submit to you, you need church more than you need relationship with other people. Because if you don't know how God treats you, you won't know how to treat them. I'll submit to you that you need church more than you need your car. Because if God doesn't walk with you and talk with you, if God doesn't give you the ability, then you wouldn't know what to do with everything that God gave to you. I'm trying to tell you, you need to be in the house of the Lord because the Bible says that where two or three touch and agree, that's where God is. I don't know about y'all, but I learned to love me some church. I've learned. I've learned to love me some church. I've learned to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And I learned that church is like a bank account. I can't come looking for something I ain't got. But if I come with something, when I come through the door, I can get something out. I wish you'd tell your neighbor, what did you bring with you today? If you only come to church on Resurrection Sunday, you miss Jesus does more. After he gets up. Do, do y'all hear me this morning? I'm, would you just tell your neighbor that's not the end of the story? G Jesus still has more to do. And hear this. After they get up. I came to talk to you today. About what Jesus did after he got up. Do y'all hear this? I, I came to talk to you. I know last Sunday was about how they laid him in the grave, how they crucified him, how he stayed there all night Friday and all night Saturday and how early Sunday morning he got up. But can I tell y'all, I thank God he got up, but I also thank God even more that he didn't get up and leave me. That when he got up, he told me, if I got up, you can get up too. And I got some instructions for you. Because if you don't know what to do after you get up, chances are it won't be long before you're back down again. Yeah, yeah, last Sunday we all got up. Jesus didn't just get up. Last Sunday all of us got up. But I guarantee you throughout the week there's something that's been trying to pull you back down. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. Just keep looking this way. It, I guarantee you that by the time you got out of church on Sunday morning, on Sunday morning, last Sunday, between then, that Sunday and this Sunday, something happened, someone happened, some bump in the road, some hurdle of life, some devil, some demon, some enemy, some antagonist, some teacher, some fellow student, some booty, some, some, some spouse, some bully, somebody somewhere, y'all, has tried to take away everything that you tried to go forward with I wish you would simply tell somebody I made it another day I made it another another day tell somebody I made it another week I made it another Sunday I got up and praise God I stayed up he 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 he, he stays up he Jesus says, let me, let me tell you what I'm going to do after I got up. I think this is important, and I know it's important because in the Gospel of Luke, I want you all to see that Luke, hear this, Luke is the only gospel that gives us details on what Jesus did after he was resurrected. It's the only one. Luke is the only one that tells us the story in detail about what Jesus did after he got up. Now, everybody tells us he got up, but only Luke gives us the details. Everyone, in fact, tells us he ascends, but only Luke gives us the details. And I want you to hear this today. Luke does not give us the details based on characters. Luke gives us the details based on geography. Luke says, after Jesus got up, he appeared here. And then he appeared there. And then he did this. And he keeps on giving us places. He says he met two of his disciples on the road to Emmaus. 
And he says, and don't miss that because after he met them in Emmaus, then he went back to Jerusalem and met the rest of the disciples. And then he led them in our text as far as Bethany. He gives us the details of what happens after resurrection according to geography only. And he lists a few names, which is Luke's way of saying, if you don't believe me, just check with the people I mentioned. I want y'all to hear this. He says, just check with the people I mentioned. Here's what the first thing that Luke says to us. He says, I want you to know this, that if Jesus got up, you are also to get up. Watch this, y'all. He says, but don't miss this. But if Jesus ascended, you are also to ascend. I believe, y'all, that there should be a Sunday after Easter that's called Ascension Sunday. I really believe that. I believe that ascension should be taught through principle and application to everyone who believes in the resurrection so that they will know that if God gets you up, then it's also your job to keep rising above what God brought you up out of. Now, some of y'all don't hear me. You already went to sleep on me. But can I tell you that if you got up, resurrection is your first responsibility. But oh, don't you stop at resurrection. Ascension is your next responsibility. God did not just expect you to get up. On, on Easter Sunday morning, now God is saying, I expect you to operate at a level that is above the things that used to pull you down. That when you were resurrected, there were some things that tried to get, kill you, some things that tried to destroy you, some things that tried to take away all that God put in you. And he says, now that you're back up again, I'm expecting you to have enough faith not to fall back into the same holes that you fell into before I got you up that it is time now for you to be smarter for you to be better for you to have more faith and to move in a different way not to live your life like somebody who didn't get up but to live your life like somebody who knows I'm on my way up you ought to tell somebody I didn't just get up but I'm on my way up I wonder because some of y'all ain't saying nothing is there any of y'all who know that out of all that God has given to you God still has more for you I don't know how good life is for you. My prayer is that life is better than you can imagine. But no matter how good it is, God gave me a prophetic announcement for you. And that announcement is simply this, that no matter how good it is, it's getting ready to get better. Some of y'all ain't going to say nothing. But oh, I want you to hear that today. Some of y'all can't receive it, but I'm going to toss it to you. God told me no matter how good life is for you, hold on, buckle up, because God says, I got something for you your eyes hadn't seen, your ears hadn't heard. God says, don't worry, things are about to get better. Since y'all so quiet, I tried not to do it, but why don't you turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, did you hear what the preacher said about me and you? The preacher said that through the inspiration of Jesus Christ that things are about to get better. You ought to tell them, I don't know about you, but I can't wait for the day when I can look and see myself going up. Anybody here, I got to do a check because y'all making me nervous. Anybody here can say, I can see myself going up. I, I can see things getting better. I can see God blessing me in ways that I cannot imagine I'm on my way up. I'm on my way up. Don't worry. I'll work on you a little bit further. Watch this. He, Jesus shows us something. These, Luke doesn't list these things in chronological order. You got to read all the Gospels to see the things that Jesus has done. But Luke is real detailed. But one of the things we know that Jesus did was that he appeared to the disciples. That's right. He appeared to the disciples, y'all. And we don't know again in chronological order how he appeared but we know that he appeared and in Jesus's appearing we learn these lessons of how we might conduct ourselves when we're on our way up uh -huh. Jesus asserts to us that there's some things you don't do when you on your way up 
There's some things you don't tolerate anymore when you're on your way up. There's some conversations you don't have to have no more when you're on your way up. There's some things that used to bother you that don't bother you no more when you're on your way up. There's some people who used to know exactly how to get under your skin, but now that you're on your way up, it don't work like it used to work. There's uh, some things that used to cause your attitude and emotions uh, to sway and cause them to be down cast but all oh, now that you know you're on your way up things are a little bit different watch the first thing Jesus does I want y'all to get this it's in the text one of the first things Jesus does when he realizes he's on his way up the first thing Jesus does is he realizes that he doesn't owe everybody an explanation Yeah, Uh, uh, before, if you watch before the resurrection, Jesus was doing everything for everybody. If you were hungry, he made fish. If you were sick, he healed you. If you snuck up behind him and touched the hem of his garment without him even seeing you coming, you were made whole. If you were demon possessed, he would cast those demons out into pigs and those pigs would go running in the lake. If you were on water at night and there was a storm, he would step out of the boat and walk on the water towards you. And when you were confused, he'd say peace be still y'all Jesus would do all these things in fact even if you ran out of wine Jesus would turn the water into wine. Some of y'all don't want to say amen out loud, but you're saying thank you, Jesus, in your head. It's all good. Watch this. But y'all, y'all, Jesus, y'all, is doing all of this stuff before. But when he comes back, he says, I ain't got time for all that. If you didn't get it when I tried to give it to you now, you got to take it from the disciples. If you didn't give it when I was, if you didn't get it when I was here now, you have to figure out how to get it for yourself. He says, this time I'm on my way up. I can't have every conversation, can't entertain every person. And you might call me funny acting, but it's cool because up here I can't even hear what you really got to say down there. Some of y'all are going to miss it, but I'm trying to help you without giving you the sermon cliff notes that since you're on your way up if you want to stay up and go up there's some conversations some people some company some things some temptations some weaknesses some issues that you had before last Sunday that you just can't have this Sunday there's some things that you have to refuse to entertain Y'all want to hear me? I, I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. But, but some of y'all would do very good not to ask God to take people out of your life, but to decide to move them out of your life for yourself to stop asking God, Lord, when you going to take them away? And the Lord says to you, I'm going to take them away when you put them away. But if you ain't going to put them away, don't pray to me to take them away. You got to realize you are on your way up. Jesus, y'all, decides first, I'm on my way up, and so I can't have a conversation with everybody. I'm sorry. I'm moving. I got things to do. I'm sorry. God has a purpose for me. I'm sorry. I won't be here forever, and because I won't be here forever, I can only surround myself with people who get it. I'm trying to help somebody, but y'all ain't saying nothing. I I don't have time to explain to you why I do what I do, how I do it. You got to pray and get some of this stuff for yourself. Y'all going to miss it because some of y'all are looking down on people that God is blessing and you think that they've become snooty and arrogant and you don't understand that if God is taking you up, everything about you can't stay the same. If God is doing something different in you, there's somebody eventually got to start talking about you. Y'all don't hear me. If God is blessing you eventually there's some relationships that have to break down if God is blessing you and promoting you there's some conversations and some company you cannot keep because some people can see what God is doing in you before you can see it yourself and they start pulling on you to get you down before you can get back up so you've got to know that if God resurrected you then I'm uh, God must be picked me up to bring me up he wouldn't have picked me up unless he wanted to bring me up do y'all hear me he, he says to them, he says, I can't entertain every conversation. I can't do that. Um, I got to keep moving. I'm sorry you're offended. I'm sorry you think I'm arrogant, but that's something you're going to have to deal with on your own. People who are on their way up don't have time for that sort of a thing. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Jesus, but watch this. But how does Jesus get to the disciples, y'all? This part might make me shout all by myself. How does Jesus get into the company of disciples? How he gets in with the door closed. 
I, I've preached this to y'all before. This part, of the, this part of this story always makes me happy. That they got the door locked. They're inside. They are afraid. And Jesus walks in and says, peace. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, I love this part of the story. Jesus walks in and says, Peace, peace. They, they, can y'all can y'all see that? You you locked in wondering if you're gonna be next to be nailed to a cross, and the person who got nailed walks in, and you got the door locked, which means they come through the wall. And when they come in, they don't say, "Come on, grab your stuff, let's go, hurry up before they come." They say, "Peace, peace. y'all." Jesus walks in and says peace. I, I want y'all to get this, that Jesus says that when you're on your way up, hear this, you never allow a closed door to stop you. <laughs> I wish I had a witness here. Some, some of you don't understand that resurrection is a universal, is a master key. That when God has placed something on your heart and in your spirit to do, you have a master key. When God has gotten you up, you have a master key. And there's some doors that appear closed to you, but God is saying to you, don't you turn around because this thing seemed closed. I'm going to take you through some stuff that people are trying to keep you out of. You're going to miss it, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. That some of y'all are expecting God for the next level, but when you look at the next level, you can't see how God getting from where you are to where you desire is possible. Can I tell you that if you can't see how God is going to do it, you're in a good position. In fact, oh, I wish you would hear me today. In fact, if you can't see how God can do it, listen to this. You are just right for a miracle. All right. Okay, fine. If you can't see how God can make this happen, you are just right for a miracle. If you desire it in your heart but can't figure it out in your mind, oh my goodness, if you just keep the faith, what God is going to do is take you through some walls where the doors have been closed. Look at somebody and tell them, never let a closed door stop you. Never let somebody telling you no make you believe that God said no. Never let the fact that there's more zeros before the decimal sign than there is after the decimal sign make you believe that God can't still put it in your lap if God has it for you. Never let the fact that you don't have the educational qualifications make you think that God can't bless you to sit in the position and in the seat anyway. I wonder if there's somebody in here just nine of y'all I'll make ten who could say I'm doing some stuff that they say I ain't qualified for right now I wish I had a witness here somebody here who can just say that yeah I got a good job and my degree was not in that and there's some of y'all who are saying I got a job that they said you needed a degree for and I ain't got no degree and I'm in the job right now y'all ain't got to say nothing I'm the supervisor why because God has put me where God wanted me to be they said that the door was closed but all oh, I learned to never let a closed door stop me That, that's just how you act when, you, when you're on your way up. It, Jesus does something else. Y'all, I'm trying to finish this real fast. It says, according to Luke's account, he goes and he appears to two of his disciples on the road to Emmaus. Now, this is good because when Luke starts giving these geographical clues, he's trying to tell you, don't miss that I'm not giving you names and I'm giving you places. Don't miss this. I'm not giving you names. I'm giving you places. Come on, Pastor Paul. Say it again. They'll wake up. Don't miss. I'm not giving you names. I'm giving you places. Don't miss. I'm not giving you names. I'm giving you places. For many of us, God is not showing you who's going to help you, but he's showing you where he's going to help you. You're trying to figure out how God is going to do it. And God is saying, don't worry, just go to the place. If you go to the place that I showed you, I'll have the people in the place. But don't you allow the fact that you don't know the people to keep you from the place. Y'all going to miss it. I'm trying to help you. He, the, he says, watch this, the road to Emmaus. Y'all check this when you get home. The road to Emmaus is a spiritual sign that you are walking with God. That you are walking with growth. The road to Emmaus, check it out when you get home, is a symbol in the text that means that you are, uh, you are open to discipleship. Hear this. And though you don't know what's coming next, you believe that God is going to show up while you're on the way. Oh, 
I wish you'd hear this. That, that's caviar. Did y'all hear that? These two disciples were on their way to Emmaus. And if you read the chapter, it says they're talking to each other saying, I can't believe what happened. I can't believe they would do this to Jesus. But even with their disbelief about what happened, they still had belief in faith in the God that it happened to. And so when they're walking along the way, they can't help but remember everything they saw God do already and they're dedicated to the gospel even though they feel separated from the God. Y'all gonna miss it. And because they start walking by faith faith hear this on the road with a God that they don't understand and they have not seen watch what happens Jesus shows up on the road as an angel can I tell you that you can't expect Jesus to show up where you can't go You can't expect Jesus to show up where you won't walk. You can't expect Jesus to do something in a place you're afraid to go to. They are walking along the road in Emmaus and all of a sudden Jesus just showed up. Can I give you another prophetic word that this week I believe this by faith that as you walk into what God is telling you to do, don't be surprised when God just shows up. Do y'all hear me? Tell somebody he's going to show up. He's... He's going to show up. Boy, I wish y'all would wake up. I was excited about this little sermon. I Tell somebody he's going he's gonna to show up. I don't know where you need him. It may be on your job. It may be in the house. It may be in your body. But I'm a living witness that God will show up. He'll show up and I wish somebody here has been through it. I wish somebody here could testify with me that that just when you needed God most, when life seemed the most dark and the most grim, that you can say, I was there in a dark place, but God showed up. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all lost some people you love and, and it felt like you wouldn't make it, but you can say this morning, I'm here because God showed up some of y'all your month was longer than your money but your light's still on there's still food on the table and clothes on your back and gas in the car and love in your heart you have to say i'm here because god showed up he showed up again he he showed up again he showed up again and hear this how dare we let God show up and we act like we in church and don't know where we are if if God showed up for you you ought to put your blessed hands together and show up for God yeah he's he He doesn't let a closed door stop him. He keeps going and he realizes that all conversations are no longer necessary. And then, and then the text says, I got to race through this. Then the text says, then he goes with them as far as Bethany. Now they were in Jerusalem. I told y'all Luke talks geographically. Uh They're in Jerusalem. And Jesus talks to them, gives them the understanding of the scripture. He tells them what to preach. He tells them, from now on, I want you to preach about sins being forgiven and grace being sufficient. (laughs) He, He says, that's what you tell them. I want that to be the sermon topic for everybody. That because I got up, your sins are forgiven. And my grace is sufficient. Boy, I'm going to say it again because y'all awfully quiet. Because I got up, here's the good news. He said, all y'all, all of y'all who are preachers, just preach this word for now on. Whenever somebody feels guilty or whenever someone feels like they, they've done something that I can't forgive them about, you tell them, when I got up, their sins are forgiven. And my grace is sufficient. Watch this. Then he tells them, come on, y'all, let's go for a walk. Jesus, where are we going? Come on, just, just, just walk with me. He walks with them and the text says he takes them as far as Bethany. When he takes them to Bethany, he says, all right, I'm on my way up. He leaves and he ascends into heaven. Now Jesus, here we go with this geography again, leaves Bethany to go to heaven takes the disciples from Jerusalem and leaves them in Bethany. Bethany is symbolic. If you remember, 
something amazing happened, Reverend Bantam, in Bethany. If y'all got time, I'll tell you and remind you of a man by the name of Lazarus. He died one day, and, and, and when, when he died, he was placed into the tomb, and his sisters, Mary and Martha, called to Jesus and told Jesus, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. And then when Jesus shows up in this town called Bethany, he says to them, oh, you just don't know. You'll see him again in the resurrection. Y'all gonna miss it. And then he stands outside of the tomb and yells out, Lazarus, come forth and Lazarus comes out all of this happened in Bethany but because this happened watch this in Bethany the people forgot about the resurrection that happened in Bethany and they allowed the sadness that happens in Bethany to overtake the resurrection that happened in Bethany because people have a thing where they like to dwell on the bad things and forget about all the good things God has had done. And so Jesus tells them, watch this, I'm going to take you from Jerusalem, which is symbolic of God's presence, the place where the footstool of God is. And I'm going to take you back to a place that personifies sorrow and lament, which is called Bethany. And I'm going to leave you there. Watch this. I'm going to take you from where God is and leave you in a place called sorrow. Now, I'm going to heaven, but you got to decide, watch this, what you going to do. Are you going to stay in a place of sorrow or are you going to decide to move forward and do what God is? Y'all going to miss it. Boy, I'm trying to help you. I, Jesus says, I'm, I'm leaving, but I'm taking you to a place called Bethany. And when I get you to Bethany, I'm going to leave you right there. Some of y'all are trying to figure out how is it that I can be up here one day. And down here the next day. It's been, watch this. It says that after Jesus leaves them and ascends to heaven, the disciples are sitting around saying, why would he leave us in a place of sorrow? Watch this. But if you read the text, you'll see that Jerusalem is just seven miles away. <laughs> Jerusalem is just seven miles away. Hear this, which simply means this, that God is saying if you stay in a sad, sunken place, when you know that happiness is just around the corner, don't you get upset with God and say that God left you where you refused to move from. God says, I will let you be down and out if you want to be down and out. But don't you forget that Jerusalem is just up the road. Can I tell y'all, oh, I'm preaching better than some of y'all are saying amen. Some of y'all, the devil has tore you down from last Sunday to this Sunday. That was just seven days ago. Oh, y'all don't want to say nothing, but I'm preaching better than you saying amen. You ain't got no hallelujah. You sitting in church looking like somebody stole your dog and stabbed your cat. You sitting here looking like God's grace ain't good. You want somebody to beg you to put your hands together and stand on your feet. The devil is a lie. If Jesus will leave you in Bethany, Pastor Porter will too. Because I've learned this, that some people want to be sad, want to be stressed, want to be down, and want demons to overtake them. If that's what you want, you stay right where you are. But I thank God that Jerusalem is just... I wish I had a witness here. You ought to get on somebody's nerve who ain't said nothing in church since they got in here and tell them if you want to sit there like that, you stay there. If you want to stay broke, you stay broke. If you want to stay sick, you stay sick. But I can't stay in Bethany. Jerusalem is just up the road. Tell somebody, and since it's up the road, and since that's where I'm heading, can I tell you what my future holds? I'm on my way. I wish somebody would praise them with me. Not everybody, but those of y'all who know that you can't stay down forever. Lean over to your neighbor and tell them, I don't mean to get on your nerves, but I got good news for you. And point at yourself and say, I'm on my way up. I'm on my way up. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way up. Look at somebody, tell them, don't settle for resurrection. 
You got rising to do. Oh, I wish I had a witness here. I hear the old song saying, living, he loved me, died, he saved me, buried, he carried my sins far away, but rising, I wish somebody knew to him, rising, rising, he justified, freed me forever, and one day, he's coming back. Glorious, glorious day. Turn to three people and tell them I'm on my way up. I'm on my way up. I'm on my way up. Because you can't keep a good man down. You can't keep a good woman down. Devil, take your best shot. Sickness, take your best shot. Temptation, take your best shot. Death, take your best shot. There's only one option for somebody like me I'm on my way I wish you'd get it with me today y'all I feel like having church tell somebody I'm on my way up I can't stay down I can't be defeated I can't be taken over I can't stay in Bethany I've cried long enough I've been tormented long enough I've been worried long enough. I've been stressed long enough. I've been down long enough. But I see that there's somewhere that I can head to. And I see it just in the distance. Why don't you turn to somebody and tell them happiness is not far away. Have I got a witness here? Y'all, I'm starting to feel like preaching. Tell somebody joy is not far away peace is not far away love is not far away forgiveness is not far away why don't you take a step and tell somebody i'm leaving bethany i'm leaving bethany i'm leaving bethany i'm heading to jerusalem i'm going where love is I'm going where joy is. I'm going where peace is. I'm going where grace is. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way up. Y'all, I feel like preaching. I feel like praising him. I feel like lifting him up because it'll be a shame to wait till the battle is over and shout when you win. But you ought to shout while the devil's on your trail and tell him if you stay with me, I'm going to pull you back to Jerusalem. Tell somebody we got to go back. We got to go back. We got to go back. Back to Jerusalem. Hallelujah. 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 Just to declare over your life, I'm on my way up. I'm on my way up. You got to remember that. When you go to your job tomorrow, you got to walk in and say, I'm on my way. You got to remember that. When you get in your car after church, you got to lay your hand on the steering wheel and say, I'm on my way. You got to remember that when you get to your house, put your keys in the door. You got to walk in and say, I'm on. Lord have mercy. I'm on. I'm on my way up. You got to remember that the next time the tempter calls you, or text you you got to pick up the phone and say I'm sorry I can't talk now when they ask you why you got to say because I'm on my way Yo, go ahead. <laughs> I'm on my way up I'm on my way up 
and I have to declare it over my life because there's so much that the devil wants to take from me that I have to remind myself of who I am and where I belong let me tell you something don't let your spiritual life stop at resurrection you have ascending to do oh. it is now your job to stop entertaining faithless doubtful condescending negative people and persuasions that want to pull you back down to where you were before you got up it's time for you to take back your power and realize that ascension is not just your privilege it's your responsibility yeah shame on us if we wait another year to just get back up again shame on us you know what it means if we wait till next resurrection Sunday to get up again that means you're willing to spend 364 days down to spend one day up I wish you turn to your neighbor and say the devil is a liar that's too long to be down. I wish y'all would talk in church. Talk to yourself. You ain't got to say it to your neighbor. Tell yourself, that's too long to be down. That's too long. 364 days a year is too long to be miserable. It's too long to be unhappy. It's too long to be filled with doubt. It's too long to feel faithless. It's too long to be consumed with weakness and temptation. It's too long. I've got to ascend and in order to ascend hear this I got to make some decisions because notice when Jesus ascended into heaven y'all hear this watch this he didn't take nobody with him he didn't say Peter you want to go James you want to go John, you want to go? No. You know why? Because everybody who's meant to be there will get there when you arrive. I want you to hear this. Y'all forgive me, but I, I feel the Spirit speaking. Stop feeling obligated to pull people with you who don't have enough faith to believe they can get there through the God in them themselves. I don't know who it is. It may be your spouse. It may be your child. It may be your sibling. It may be your childhood friend. But don't you get tired of pulling them every time you want to move? Don't, don't you get tired of always having to take care of them like they're a child and they grown? Don't you, don't you get tired of always having to speak encouragement into them and then just for them to go back down again and then you got to use all your energy to pull them back up again and then you find out that helping you is hurting me you have got to change your attitude hear this and it doesn't mean that you don't care and it doesn't mean that you I learned this I learned this there's this phrase that everybody uses called narcissist they like to call people narcissist and they they say it's someone who's self-absorbed who's only concerned about themselves but here's what I learned about that it's true they do exist but here's what I learned that most people who label other people narcissists are people who could not get their way with somebody else and because they couldn't get their way with them they call them a name but hear this if somebody has to get their way with you to have peace with you you're not the narcissist they are don't forget that this life is about what you and God can accomplish together 
Watch this. And along, I don't know why the Spirit is making me say this, but I got to stick with it, y'all. And along the way, as you go up, God will bless you to be an inspiration. And um, you're going to find out as you go up that people are going off. They're going to say you act funny. They're going to say you brand new. They're going to say you think you all that. And anything else that they can come up with. And the reality of the situation is, if they were meant to get what God had for them when they had contact with you, when God moved you, God would have moved them too. Don't forget that. Turn to your neighbor and say, you don't owe nobody nothing. I want you to get that in your spirit. You don't owe anybody anything. And it's your job to decide who has enough God in them and who can see it. And if God gives you access to them, then you say, I'm going and God told me, take you with me. But if they want to live in Bethany, don't you stay in Bethany and hold up your Jerusalem experience in the name of loyalty. If you ain't loyal to yourself and your God, you can't be loyal to nobody else. Charity starts at home. And that ain't got nothing to do with the doors and the roof on a building. That got something to do with your house. If you are not charitable to you, then what you give to them will destroy you. And they'll go out and be happy and you'll be miserable. And you'll be trying to figure out, God, why would you leave me like this? God, you said it's better to give than receive. You said that we should feed the hungry and clothe the naked. You said we should love one another. But God says back to you, love is not reluctantly passive. Love is not being somebody's doormat. Sometimes love has to say, I've done enough and I'm gone. Y'all can't receive this, but I'm trying to help you. Sometimes you got to learn to love from a distance. Hear this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Some people you got to love from Jerusalem. I wish y'all would hear me today. I'm trying to help somebody here. You got to tell some people who are in Bethany, I love you, but I love you from Jerusalem. I love you from the place where God is. I can't love you in all that sorrow. I can't love you in all that pessimism. I can't hang out with you there. If that's where you are, you got to stay there by yourself. Y'all hear that? I can't help it. I'm on my way. <laughs> I'm trying to help y'all today. Lay hands on yourself and say, I'm on my way up. Only if you believe it. I don't want you to just say it if you don't believe it. But for those of you who believe it, lay hands on yourself and say, I'm on my way up. I'm on my way up. There's a mother here who's concerned about her grown child. She can't do nothing about mama. Lay hands on yourself. I'm on my way up. You got to take care of you first. I feel this in my spirit. Some of y'all are responding already. This is how I know it's the spirit. Some of y'all are here and you need to learn how to take care of you. Wherever you are, move from where you are and come up here. Leave Bethany and come to Jerusalem. I got to learn to take care of me. It's not selfish for me to look out for me it's not selfish for me to get tired of watering a tree that decides it's never gonna grow it's not selfish of me to keep pouring love into a container that ain't got no bottom it's not selfish of me to love myself appropriately so that I can love someone else adequately. 
I'm on my way up. Y'all come on in. Come on in. Give them room. Come on in. Yeah. You're on your way up. You've been in Bethany far too long. You've been in that place far too long. The devil has tried to overtake your mind far too long. He's had you crying far too long. People have had their way with you far too long. But today God told you, you go back to church. Because you're on your way up. And I want to speak, hear this, hear this. I want to speak to the spirit of loneliness you're going to feel. Hear this church. While you're on your way up. I want to speak to how you're going to have to encourage yourself. I want to speak to how you're going to have to need scripture for yourself. I want to speak to how you're going to have to pray for yourself. Because God is not going to put the people around you who need to be there until he moves the people from around you who don't need to be there. And so hear this today. Hear this. I want you to hear the whole word of God. You're going to have to go through a season of loneliness <laughs> loneliness God is telling me to tell you that loneliness but God told me to tell you you ain't going to die from it you ain't going to get sick over it you ain't going to miss a meal through it you ain't going to be homeless because of it but God says I need some time with just you and me and when you feel most lonely speak to me and I'll speak to you speak to me and I'll speak to you don't ignore me because you can't see me and settle for something you can see but something you don't want to be or be with for that matter God says embrace this season of loneliness as a time of development as a time of strengthening because you are on your way from Bethany to Jerusalem somebody speak the words of faith I'm on my way come on say it like you mean it I'm on my way I'm on my way my job can't stop it my past can't stop it my mistakes and my bad decisions can't stop it I'm on my way up you know the promises of God only require for you to claim them there's promises all around you but they're unclaimed you gotta claim this one let us pray God canceling the plans of the enemy at the forefront of our spirit possibly that they'll find themselves right back in the place that you picked them you didn't appear to Pontius Pilate you didn't appear to the Roman you didn't appear to the one who who believed in you and so God we ask now that you would help us to be delivered from making unnecessary appearances hanging out with people who don't mean us any good holding conversations that don't build us up scrolling social media for things that only make us feel inadequate and undermined staying up at night and watching TV shows that keep us from becoming our best selves because we recognize that the devil has all kind of ways of tearing us down God we thank you for giving us the strength to no longer make unnecessary appearances and then Lord we thank you 
that no closed door no obstacle in our way will ever mean again to us that we do not have divine access but God give us the knowledge and the wisdom to walk through what the devil has put up to try to keep us from gaining entry and then Lord help us that every time Bethany tries to make us a citizen every time our tears want to take over our emotions define our life change our countenance and cause us to settle for less than who you made us to be every time Bethany wants to give us an ID card and try to hook us up with another citizen of Bethany Lord we pray that you will show us again the way back to Jerusalem the way back to your feet the way back to your promise the way back to your guarantee the way back to your grace the way back to your mercy the way back to your favor the way back to your forgiveness help us to get back to Jerusalem and help us Lord to know that if we gotta go by ourselves who's ever meant to be there when we get there will be there thank you Thank you, Jesus, for Jerusalem. Thank you, Jesus, for the promise of your presence. Thank you, Jesus, that trouble don't last always. Thank you that weeping endures for nights, but joy comes in the morning. Thank you, Jesus, that we are on our way up. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit, we call it done. And everybody who knew they was on their way up shouted amen. Amen. Come on and put your hands together and praise God that you are on your way up. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. stand with me church for just a moment we want to praise God for 
young brother Tyler who came to receive salvation. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Do better than that. Come on. Yeah. Amen. And our sister who's come, did she leave? Where'd she go? One, one, one lady came and she asked me to pray for her family. Yeah, come back. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Give her a hand. We're going to pray for her family. Yeah. Amen. And we have this wonderful family. Can I have your last name? Henderson. The Hendersons have come to also become impactors. Praise the Lord. God bless you, sir. Come on. Amen. God bless you. May I ask why you've come? Amen. He's come to know God more. Amen. That road to Emmaus. Praise the Lord. God bless you, my brother. We come on, church. Praise God. Jesus. This part of the service, if you ask me, is one of the most important parts. This is why we do this. We sing and we pray and we preach and we praise because we want people to know that Jesus is all to us. He should be all to you. And so I thank God for all of you, Brother Tyler, to my dear brother, to my sister of Comfort Prayer, to this family, the Hendersons, to all of you, and to Brother Keith. He came up last couple weeks ago, and Tyler is his son. He brought his son. He said he gets saved today. <laughs> I like it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And so I want to pray. Tyler's salvation is, is simple, but it's not elementary. It's not what church sometimes makes it seem like. Some people think that when they get saved, it means that they're perfect or that they're going to be perfect, which means like they're never going to do anything wrong again. That, my friend, is not true. If we were to be honest with you, anybody in here who's been saved any amount of times would tell you that they messed up after they got saved too. And that's not our way of glorifying what we've done wrong. It's our way of communicating that you don't have to be perfect to be saved. In fact, because God is perfect, that's why we get saved. God kind of fills in the blanks for us and allows us in our imperfection to be made perfect, to look perfect. Jesus, if you will, makes us look better than we really look. You ever heard of filters before? So somebody put a filter on their picture and then you see them in person and say, boy, they don't look nothing like they you ever saw that before? Tell the truth, Tyler. You know what I'm talking about? You can laugh. It's all good. Man. That's called the filter. Jesus is like the filter between us and God. When God looks at us, if it wasn't for Jesus, we would look like the picture without the filter. But when Jesus gets in between, God sees our problems and says, man, Jesus, you made them look real good. And they don't look nothing like they did before they met you. And that's our prayer for you today. And because you're saved, this is now how you look to God. God looks at you now and says, man, Tyler looks so much better with the filter of Jesus. And you sure do, my friend. And for that, we are grateful. In order to become saved, the Bible says that we must pray this prayer. And I want you to pray it along with me if you agree. It's good. I don't know why you came up. I don't know if it was of your own volition. I don't know. But you're in the right place and you're doing the right thing. And if, it, if you believe in God in your heart, because there's some things nobody can do for you but yourself. If you believe in God in your heart, you, anybody else in this place, anybody watching, whether now or later, you can repeat this prayer after me and you'll be saved. Repeat it after me if you will. Lord, come into my heart. I confess that I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness and I receive your forgiveness. I believe that you lived that you died 
and that you were resurrected for my sins and I receive your salvation in Jesus name amen and you're saved just like that come on God bless you man congratulations congratulations amen my brother we pray as God continues to keep you on that road that he'll bless you and know this that as you walk with him he'll show up along the way amen church amen, amen. to this great family who has come we receive you in that right church amen. we receive you and we're so grateful to have you to be a part the Hendersons praise God come on y'all give them a hand praise as they return to their seats too God bless you we're so grateful to have you come on we're gonna pray for our sister would you bow with us as we go to God in prayer let us pray God we thank you for this our sister she comes standing in the gap for her family members who are experiencing the pain and the grief yes. and God we pray now because you said with two or three touch and agree that you'd be in the midst yes. that our touching and agreeing for their walk where you'll show up that it'll happen and we know it will because faith does not fail and so God, thank you for her intercession. Thank you for her stepping out. And thank you for you showing up. It's done in this well in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Come on, church. Praise God for that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. It's offering time. Yeah. And we know that God loves a cheerful giver. As you prepare to give to God a portion of what God has given to you to ensure that you are equipped to give, if you would like my brothers and my sisters to give physically and you do not have an envelope, if you did not receive one, just lift your hands right where you are. Keep your hand up and someone will see that hand and come around and make sure that you are equipped to give on this morning. If you'd like to give electronically, you can give via cash app by searching dollar sign impact give or give a five by searching impact church international. Uh, you may also, I see a hand right here beside you. There's one right over there. Yep. There you go. Yeah. All right. Uh, we can also give via our app. And so uh, make, make sure that you can uh, do that. That is the best way for us to give. And uh, we know that God blesses us as we prepare to give a portion of what God has given to us. Amen. Amen. If you are ready to give now, whether you're in this place or in distance now or later, why don't you lift that gift, that device proudly to God as we go to God in prayer. Let us pray. God, we thank you. We praise you, glorify and magnify you. For you are the source by which we receive and the force by which we give. Now, God, bless these gifts, every lifted hand, every giving heart, that as it is given, that they might also receive in abundance because of their obedience to your word. We claim the promises that your Bible declares that we will have. And so, Lord, thank you for the overflow in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. And all who agreed said, Amen. After you've given, please take the time to ready yourselves for Holy Communion. Anybody thankful that God keeps making a way for you? Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands right here. Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing. It keeps on making. Hold up. Hold up. Always up. Always in the out. Hold up. Hold up. Lord, you've done so much. On to you. On to you. Hey! 
supper together if for some reason you do not have a set of sacraments and you would like one just raise your hand right where you are and leave that hand up and someone will come around to ensure that you've been served if you're at home and you'd like to partake and you don't have sacraments in the form that we have them today no worries you can run into your kitchen you can get a small morsel of food a small portion of something to drink and you can partake with us again for these are just symbols of a greater spiritual reality. And so feel free to partake with us as well in distance. Amen. As you ready yourselves for communion, would you lend me your ear? When Jesus administered the last supper to his disciples, he spoke to them saying, Before you partake, examine yourselves. For many eat of this bread and drink of this cup unworthily. He said that the prompt in them and understanding that none of us are worthy, but a clean heart is what God sees, that filter that we talked about a few minutes ago. What makes our heart clean when God looks at us is when God sees that we make every effort and our human power to strive to be the best that we can for God, ourselves, and others. And so to ensure that we are doing so, we pause in a moment, as our custom as a church, in a moment of silent prayer and repentance, to present to God the best heart that we can. I want to invite you along with me to pray repentantly and silently at this time let us pray amen after Jesus shared in those things he took what was left of that supper and he gave it a greater meaning took the bread and he broke it and he said this is my body which was broken for you 
Let us eat together. And after they had eaten the bread, he took the cup and said, this is my blood which was shed for your sins. Let us drink together. It is said that after they shared in those things, they headed for the Mount of Olives and they sung a song. Highest mountain. Y'all know that song? Come on, sing it with me. And it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, yes. Oh, the blood that gives me strength. From day to day, it will never lose its power. That felt good to me. Oh, it reaches, y'all ought to sing it with me one time, to the high. Come on, let me hear you. Highest mount. You ought to sing it like you've not just been resurrected, but you've ascended. And it flows to the Lord. Lowest bow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know the blood that gives me strength. From day to day, it will never lose its power. Never lose its power. That's the way they do in the old church. Oh, it'll never. Never lose. I got to be the beginning and my own backup. It will never. Y'all ought to help me. Never lose its power. It will never. Yeah, never lose its power. Look this way. I want to bless you. And now unto him. Who's able to keep you from falling. Presents you faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. Unto him who's able to take you from resurrection to ascension. Unto him who's able to keep you from entertaining worthless conversations. Unto him who's able to show up on the road that you have the faith to travel. Unto him who's pulling you out of Bethany and taking you to Jerusalem. Be glory, be majesty, dominion and power, both now, henceforth, and forever. And everybody who was on their way up said amen, amen, and amen. God bless y'all. Have an awesome week.